Toyota still spending a fortune marketing this myth about its unrivaled quality. Still seemingly dropping the ball on car making fundamentals, such as getting paint to stick to cars, and still struggling apparently with doing the right thing by owners afterwards. Is it really that hard? Welcome to 2022, dude, the year in which the truth about Toyota manages to do the whole cat from bag Houdini-esque trick. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. <laughs> Australia only, dude. Website. Card. Click it, dude, I double dead dingoes donger. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know an Australian is serious about a dare. This is a deep-seated cultural thing that you probably don't get if you're not from around here. This report brought to you by Manscaped. Yes. Male grooming is a thing, dude, and Manscaped is pre eminent here. All you need is the will to act and, of course, the right tools. Hedge control with the lawnmower 4.0. It's waterproof and USB rechargeable. Hydration, meat, crop preserver, ball deodorant. And packaging, so vital. The new Manscaped High Performance Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs form and function, more than six colour combinations. Black, grey, pinstripe, very business friendly, black with gold highlights, gold nugget, that's a real statement, and they all fit like a glove. Available in singles or you can save with a three-pack, the trademark dual pouch with sumptuous perforated fabric for maximum breathability. It's all about confidence, support and comfort, dude. Whatever the day throws at you, Manscaped has got you covered. Go to manscaped.com slash autoexpert today. You'll get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the promo code AEJC at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code AEJC at manscaped.com slash autoexpert. Your balls will thank you. And now, Toyota. Momentum is growing on an obscure Facebook page called Toyota Australia Peeling Paint. Golly gee, Jim Bob, I wonder what that's all about. Membership has rocketed almost tenfold this week from 150 to 1400. <laughs> After that bastion of quality Australian journalism, a current affair took an advertiser-defying left hook at the Big T on behalf of blue singlet bogans whose ageing Toyota shit heaps are leaving a trail of white paint like confetti on the highway in their wake. I'm seeing a meeting between the principal Toyota marketing cheese and nine senior executive advertising reptile over that report, quite likely over lunch. A buffet of shouting, invective, threats, opprobrium and profanity. I just wish I'd been there. I have been to meetings such as that. Most entertaining. Affected vehicles are apparently all white in colour and it appears to be a systemic problem where Toyota just couldn't figure out how to make the paint sticky enough over the long term. Getting paint to stick to a car doesn't seem that cutting edge in the context of ambient automotive technology. A recent post from Facebook user Helen Goldsworthy. I have a 2007 Prado Grande paint colour 070 pearl white paint peeling on nearly all panels except for back door. It certainly gives the vehicle a distinct and some would say ghetto look. <laughs> I think you'd agree. What does Toyota say about this inconvenient evidence for its number two attempt at quality control. The condition involves a specific factory applied white paint colour 
colour code 040 and may occur when sunlight slash ultraviolet exposure over time degrades the adhesion between the factory applied paint primer coat layer and the base metal electro deposition layer causing paint to peel from the metal body panel. So not really their fault then, at least according to them. Who could possibly have foreseen that the vehicles would be used in an environment with incident sunlight slash UV. Just didn't see that one coming, pretty clearly. Pro tip, you Toyota science illiterates. UV is an integral part of sunlight. Your wording indicates you think they're separate things, and they're not. For the record, sunlight is UV, visible light, and infrared. That's just how this works. It's called physics. I would expect every teenage child in an advanced Western democracy to know this. Dude, if I were pry frickin' Mensa, they all would. And this would make Australia less shit. Toyota admits this flaky paint botch job has happened to Corolla and Ruckus models manufactured from 2007 to 2015. In other words, they managed to build them defective for eight long years. <laughs> That's real consistency. Note the absence of the word Sorry, Toyota has a warranty extension program in place for the above involved vehicles, which includes free of charge repairs for vehicles for 10 to 12 years from the date of first registration, regardless of mileage. What is it really? Is it 10 years or 12 years? Don't leave us hanging like this. <sighs> anyway, oh, what a feeling, I suppose, but... Not so much for the owners of RAV4s and Prados who claim also to be affected by Toyota's crap paint quality. In North America, Toyota is actually picking up the tab for this defect on vehicles dating back as early as 2008. Australian consumer law applies only to vehicles purchased after the 1st of January 2011, including vehicles purchased used from businesses, not by private sale. That legislation requires the vehicles to be safe, reasonably durable and free from manufacturing defects, including defects in the paint. Toyota is unfortunately, seemingly, based on public domain information, just one of those companies that thinks consumer law does not really apply to it. It knowingly sold 260,000 potentially defective 2.8 diesel Hiluxes, Fortunas and Prados to customers over several years recently. The federal court found them guilty of false and misleading conduct in relation to that. Lawyers and judges, of course, typically do not use publinga, such as lying scumbags, but I find it most difficult to conceive of a situation in which a car company can falsely represent a potential defect, such as the recent 2.8 diesel fiasco 260,000 times, without being both a liar and a scumbag. Maybe I just need to have a bigger think. And it further strikes me that lying scumbaggery is unlikely to be an isolated incident. More of an entrenched corporate culture kind of thing, built on a foundation of just presuming you can get away with it. So why not? Not that 260,000 scumbaggy lies is an isolated incident at all. It's a conga line of cars that stretch from Melbourne pretty much all the way to Brisbane. And of course, the lies stretch even further right across the country from east to west and north to south. Pretty interesting to me how Toyota is apparently very keen to dictate the terms of what it will look after and what it won't. When in fact, if the ACCC had a big swinging set of cojones, or if it just spent a little more time conscious, Toyota would perhaps feel obligated to respect consumer legislation pertaining to the jurisdictions in which it operates. Fear of prosecution might then motivate the big T to do the right thing just off the bat, at least 
for owners of 2011 and later vehicles. Clearly, the company's moral compass is in desperate need of calibration, like crying out for it. As for earlier vehicles, there's always the cost of negative publicity whipped up by the disgruntled to consider. Toyota says vehicles that aren't Corollas and Ruckeye, which have the paint flaking off in big fat sheets, are dealt with on a, quote, case-by-case basis. It seems that Toyota has offered to cover partially the cost of repairs for some of these pre-consumer law vehicles, but the company appears to fall back on weasel word justifications such as the age of the vehicle and or the fact that they are second-hand as an excuse to diminish its accountability for the shit paint which they applied at the factory. Two points on that. First, paint should not just fall off vehicles in dirty big sheets, even if the vehicle is 12 years old or something. This is just a bad look, especially if the brand's whole bullshit reputation is leveraged against the quaint concept of selling vehicles that practically defy the second law of thermodynamics by lasting virtually forever. And also the first law, now that I think about it, in the ridiculous case of its so-called self-charging hybrids, which is a scientific literacy test right there, as well be as well as, sorry, being a frontal assault on the epistemology of reality. Well done, Toyota. Second, car makers generally don't give a shit about you if you buy a used car that just happens to wear their badge. You just represent an opportunity to be gouged over the overpriced spare parts you will inevitably need just to keep it running. These organisations are not actually in the car business. They're in the money business. The cars are just kind of incidental, like a medium for the flow of money. All they really care about is milking it. In the boardroom, they don't sell used cars, only new cars. If you buy a used Toyota, even from a Toyota dealer, they do not regard you as a customer. They're just not smart enough, frankly, to take a slightly longer term view and realise that today's used shitbox Prado buyer for example, is tomorrow's new Land Cruiser buyer when he or she gets better qualified, climbs the corporate ladder, and his or her world domination plans get at least, you know, vestigial traction. But of course, the last thing this kind of recently affluent car buyer is going to do is stick with the brand if the used shitbox just shed its outer skin like some kind of vehicular blizzard one day on the highway and Toyota pretended it really wasn't their problem simply because, hey, we thought we could get away with it. If this has happened to you, join the Facebook group, dude. It's called Toyota Australia Peeling Paint. Make some noise, post about it, hit the Instagrams, the YouTubes, the tweets, the Twit, the, the TwitToks and the TikToks, the Whirlpools and the Reddits, all of those, even the ones that don't exist. Be both a citizen journalist and a proper pain in the corporate rectum. You know you want that. This might not bring Toyota to heel immediately, but it might make you feel somewhat better. And some opportunistic corporate asshole lawyer might even decide there's a buck in it after plumbing the depths of Toyota's considerable pockets and launch a class action on behalf of you and those similarly affected. Now, there's a cheery thought. For team consumer, this is much better than doing nothing and being vocally emasculated and just copping it on the chin, which is, of course, Toyota's preferred option, harking back to the days before social media democratised displeasure by giving everyone a voice. <laughs>